freaking <laughs> here I am on my a head. Chance, can you fix my head? <laughs> oh, can you give a wave to each other this morning? If you don't have your camera on, we'd love to see your faces, even if you're still in your pajamas, right? It's a way we continue to be community. So our announcements this morning, we have quite a few. So get ready. All right, next week we have a celebration of affirmation of baptism. You may have heard that we had some in-person experiences for those families and those ninth graders the last couple of weekends, but we know that affirmation of our faith is not just by a person or a family, it's by our whole community of faith. So next week we all um, have the opportunity to see from those experiences, affirm our own faith, and also celebrate the Reformation. So that's next weekend's worship. The following weekend will be an All Saints worship, remembering those who have gone before us in the past year. This past Wednesday, Dive Alive Refresh started. That is a worshipful experience on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 7 on Zoom. So if you didn't yet check it out, please check it out this week. Um, It is for all folks, all of you who are tuned in, can tune in. Again, just a time of centering on our faith and life during the middle of the week. Next Sunday is also pumpkin carving, and there have been announcements for our families and our households with kids and youth. There's more information on our website that's taking place from 1 to 2.30, so see those details. And some of you know that Trunk or Treat is also happening, and that's going to happen on Halloween this year. And we have put together a place that we believe will be a COVID safe environment for our households to come to and experience trunk or treat. Again, you can help in a wide variety of ways. There are volunteers needed. Again, you can go to our website. Those volunteers have the option of choosing whether or not they may or may not have contact or close proximity to people driving through. But we also need candy, lots of candy. So there is a drop-off today from 12 to 2 here at Christ Lutheran Church. If you want to go and, or have a bag of candy, you can drop off. You can probably also drop off throughout this week here during the office hours of the church to help with that. And there is an Amazon wish list. Again, a link on the website to that if you just want to go to Amazon and order the candy and have it come directly here. That is great. So that's trunk or treat. Fast forward a little bit to the end of December and Christmas, right? We're not quite there yet, but one of the ways that our congregation is involved in caring for and embracing our neighbors is through our Christmas baskets each year. And that will be happening. And our newsletter that you'll get in a couple of weeks will highlight all of the ways. What we want you to know today is that if you have a referral for a family or an individual that you think is in need of a Christmas basket this year, we ask you to be in touch with Suzy Schultz uh, here on staff by the end of October. We actually need that information pretty soon here. So send those referrals of folks to Suzy by the end of October. Um, and then the last announcement I have, I wanna say in two weeks on that All Saints worship, Following worship from 12.30 to 1 o'clock, we will be having a communion in the parking lot. So you'll stay in your cars and drive through, but if you would like to come through to receive communion on Sunday, November 1st from 12.30 to 1.30, to 1, excuse me, um, we are doing that. So again, those announcements, you can always uh, go to our website for more, our emails, or even type in the chat this morning if you missed something. But today's worship theme is generosity, embracing our future. And as you hear that woven throughout worship today, we begin with our litany. And when you hear me say, through your generosity, please respond with, please help us embrace our future. So through your generosity, please help us embrace our future. We begin... We give thanks this day to offer our thanks and praise to God, the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. 
God, we know that you have been pleased to give us your kingdom. Make us generous as you are generous. You have been rich toward us with resources, with love, and with your spirit. Through your generosity, help us embrace our future. We understand that greed is often rooted in fear of not having enough, of not being well regarded by others, of being powerless. We ask you to transform our fear into radical love and to trust in your unending care for us. Through your generosity, help us embrace our future. We confess, O God, that we have held tightly to our material possessions. We confess that we have been afraid that we won't have enough. We confess that we are part of a society preoccupied with wealth and ease. We confess that we don't know always how to be rich toward you. Through your generosity, help us embrace our future. Help us see our possessions in light of the good news of the kingdom of God. Help us see our lives and work in light of your generosity. Help us see your face in the poor and the powerless. Your kingdom, O God, is abundant with life, enough for all. Through your generosity, help us embrace our future. Let us sing.
Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you. I hope you're staying warm on this chilly Sunday morning. Oh my gosh, it is freezing outside. Um, I brought something special with me to do my children's message today. Um, it's this little gold plate here. You might recognize it. It is not, in fact, for eating uh, spaghetti out of, as Pastor Kent reminded me. Uh, but it is actually for, uh, you know, when we're in the sanctuary and we do something really cool called offering. An offering is a part of a worship service that's really important. So we do it every time we worship together. It's kind of like when we sing songs or when we hear the Bible read or when one of the pastors gives a sermon. It's one of those really important parts of a worship service. So usually we pass around this plate and everyone puts a dollar or two in there and uh, it helps the church to do really awesome things. But instead of money in my offering plate today, I have a couple of things uh, to show you. So first, I've got this uh, washcloth here, this nice blue washcloth. And this nice blue washcloth is to remind you that one of the ways that you can give of yourself is by helping out your parents or other people around your house by washing and scrubbing up, maybe cleaning the dishes after dinner and stuff like that. I've also got this really awesome uh, Incredibles action toy. It's kind of hard to see here. I'll bring it close to the camera. There we go. Oh, yeah. Very cool. And that's to remind you that, you know, sometimes you have toys that you don't use anymore. And it's really cool if you get to donate those and like share that joy with other people. So that's to remind that to you that you can give of yourself by donating things to other people who might need them. Now, I've got this awesome Ziploc baggie of, oh, it's kind of hard to see. There we go. It's a bunch of really colorful crayons that I like to draw with. And this reminds me that we can give of ourselves by doing art together. Like we can make all these beautiful things and praise God with the things we make, like these crayons. All right, I got one more thing. I was looking in my house for a watch this morning and I couldn't find one. Uh, and I realized it's because the only thing I use to keep time is my phone. So I brought my phone. This is how I keep time. And it reminds me that we can give of ourselves by giving our time. We can go volunteer. We can um, do other things that help praise God. We can come to Sunday school. That's giving of our time, right? Absolutely. All right. So remember, there are a lot of ways that you can give, and it doesn't just have to be money. So remember to bring everything that you can to the offering plate. All right. Will you please pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for giving us life. Help us to share it with others. Amen. All right, we're off to our greeter. I'll see you for Sunday school in about two minutes in Celebration Hall. Hi, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, so we're your greeters for today. and. Uh, we're here to discuss the uh, theme of the week of generosity and embracing our future. Um, so obviously, we find ourselves in a very different year this year than we were last year. Um, and it's, it's definitely caused some challenges. There's more people with need, be hunger, homelessness, and there's fewer people who have the capacity to give due to underemployment. Uh, so I think it's really, you know, when I think about this theme, uh, I just feel sort of that, that weight of for the uh, incumbents on us to whoever has the capacity to give to, to do so, especially this year. Um, and as Andrew just mentioned, you know, it doesn't have to be money per se, but definitely your your time and your effort. Um, and I think it can be small things too, whether it's, you know, um, uh, tipping a little bit extra to the waitress because they're only at 25% capacity or if, um, you know, getting a little extra on the Sunday, giving plates or simply giving. Um, yeah, all that makes a really big difference. Yeah, um, we're at a time that the only time in my life where the there's been such a need, um, or the you know biggest time in my life where there's been such a need. Um, and just to know that little things that we can do that will make all of our community in Blaine and the US and the world stronger at the end of this when we come out. Um, the other side of this pandemic. Um, if we can keep people alive and keep their livelihood and keep them strong and moving forward so that we're ready to pick back up uh, when this is over. 
Um, and like uh, Andrew just said, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be money. Um, it would, it's harder to volunteer in person now than it was before. Um, but if you research some of your favorite charities, they most likely will have things that you can do from home or things that you can gather and drop off. Um, that you can do to be generous and help them when their demand is at an all time high. And as Brian already stated, their donors, a lot of their faithful donors have had to drop off because they've lost their jobs. Um, so really, if you're if you've never donated before, this is the time to get involved in your community or just continue um, with the church and the great five different community services that we frequently support um, and back. So. Uh, there's a lot that you can do. Right. <laughs> These guys. Thank you, Michelle, Brian, and a uh, little one. The first reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We will always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith, and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. 
and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Derek, I didn't realize that this was such a historic day. Happy birthday, buddy. But the gospel for this morning will be read from the book of Matthew, uh, from the 22nd chapter, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? And they answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and go into God the things that are God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Christ Lutheran Church. Well, it is generosity weekend or embracing our future. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from Jesus the Christ. Maybe the greatest hypocrisy ever. And it's recorded right here in Scripture. In Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the Pharisees and the Herodians set out to trap Jesus in his own words. Neither was in a position to oppose the occupation forces of the Roman Empire. Both for differing reasons. You see, Pharisees did whatever it took to make deals with Rome. <clears throat> all in order to both practice their faith and keep control of the temple. Herodians, well, 
although supporters of the Roman occupation, they always had their own political motives and agenda to remain in positions of power themselves. Unlikely bedfellows. All until it came to Jesus. Jesus was disrupting everything about how the normal way of living was to be. Jesus was the epicenter of unraveling the tried and true political wrestling of their time. Jesus was at the core of disrupting the institutions that held together in tension, defying the empire while creating a system within which to operate a second layer of furthering their own economic, religious, and political tyranny. How is it that these two opposing bodies become so angry with Jesus? Jesus is hanging out with outcasts, prostitutes, lepers, and even some has-been tax collectors and fishermen. Jesus is no threat. But still, they work together to conspire a plot to entrap Jesus. Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show difference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? When I read today's lesson, I thought, whoa, 16 days until we all cast ballots. Well, then I thought, well, there is this whole voting by mail or absentee ballot thing, or how many of you already told me we've already early voted? Throw in endless streams of Pharisaic and Herodian-like television and radio ads at us? How about an upcoming presidential debate in these 16 days ahead? Taxes, health care, pandemic relief bill, emergency relief for states like California experiencing natural disasters, and and the ever-present conversation about defense spending and social security. As Matthew put it, The Pharisees and the Herodians and their gathered disciples, that is not the disciples of Jesus. That is the throngs of people supporting all the agendas, even opposing agendas. They all show up and simply think they are disguised by best intentions. Oh, dear sweet teacher, the utmost of sincere teachers. Tell us, please, please just tell us, what do you think? Let's just pause for a moment. Can we just acknowledge together Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Independents, Green Party, or any other persuasions? When a crowd this size has you on a stage and there is a microphone? Jesus knew the question was not the question. Jesus knew it was meant to be a trap. So, so what do you think? Is it, is it, is it legal not to pay taxes to Caesar? Tell us. In my first call as a pastor, a congregation that's roots began in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, I found in the back hallways the earliest documents from the opening years of the congregation. Popular practice of the church then, and in many denominations, it not only listed every person's name in the membership roles in the annual report, but it listed every amount of offering they had received 
from each family that year. Apparently, from several of the founding families still in the congregation, they remember every family every year had a mail slot assigned to them in the front entrance as you entered the church. As you came in, you got your bulletin for Sunday morning worship and any news information from the church in your mail slot. It was a new church and they could not afford postage. And apparently, not only was your family's offering recorded annually in the report, but the mail slots were not alphabetical, but rather in order of giving by family, highest to lowest. Here I was in 1999, Hank, short for Henry, a New York City salesman and businessman, now retired, a decorated World War II veteran, just looked at me as we looked at those reports, and Hank said, don't imagine we could do that now like we did then. Every year, every fall, people can feel as if there is a trap set. Stewardship Sunday, Pledge Sunday, newly coined here, Generosity Weekend. Embrace the future. And whether in the first century during the times of Jesus or in the 21st century as long ago as 1999, or whether this morning, may we embrace our faith, our neighbor, knowing our future is in Christ alone. May the words of Jesus ring clear. Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. May these just be the words of grace that alone are God's in Christ Jesus. Jesus' simple reply is clear. Taxes are taxes between you and the government. You are a part of government. The government is owed its due. And God, give to God the things that are God's. Your very life itself and its future is God's. What is your calling? What does your faith lead you to support? Commit your talents to. How are you promoting the work of God in your community? How are you building up your faith and community with what is due God? cannot say why this was grace sufficient for the assembled crowd. Scripture does not answer that. What Scripture does say, though, is this. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left Jesus and went away. Just maybe the trap they thought they were in, and the trap they thought they would capture Jesus in, that day was released to everyone's amazement. May we find ourselves, may we not find ourselves trapped by our finances, but may we be released to do the work of the kingdom of God. And may that lead us to ask very different questions. How do we do that together? How do we do that today? How will we keep doing that on into the future? If Henry, Hank, were still alive today, he would tell you that in 1999, he wasn't sure why we still weren't posting everyone's giving. I quote, you know, pastor, if we did, I think giving around here would improve I knew it was my first call as a pastor. I knew I had lots to learn. But I was fairly certain, confident, this would not increase giving at all. Then in 1999, 
or today heading into 2021. So today, as Pastor Sarah, Chris, Jason, and I began thinking about worship planning, about how to frame giving, financial giving, and all the rest of the giving done here, we looked at one another and remembered two years ago we spoke about embracing our faith. That was in alignment with, again, returning to sealed pledge cards. The preparing of our annual budgets based on ministry and faith alone. Faithfully believing in what Christ Lutheran Church can accomplish in any given year. Both financially our goals and the capacity of all our combined human resources. It is staggering, inspiring, just humbling, amazing. Then, realizing the next spring we would likely kick off our capital appeal, bearing the slogan, embracing our faith, neighbor, and future. Last year at this time, we highlighted the work of our mission partners and all the outreach we faithfully endeavor to support annually in our work as God's people. Just last week, Alexandra House spoke to the impact our congregation support does within their work in our community. So today we may feel trapped. 16 days from what has felt like an eternity, even though we go through it every four years. Or eight months ago, when we last entered our church building together to worship. Deaths, marriages, baptisms, all in these divisive and awkward times. Done in new and awkward ways. Ways we never thought possible or dreamed would bring our faith to the surface. They bring about the return of wholeness, transformation, healing, Chalk on a driveway or sidewalk, an email, a text, a newsletter, a chat in Zoom, or even silly postcards from your staff. A parking lot, a parking lot drive through with walking tacos? God's work, our hands, take home outreach projects? Even a drive through congregational vote for guest housing for family promise. God is showing up. God is sending the Holy Spirit within us. God is releasing us from traps. Whether we know it or not, that's how God's grace works. God does the work. We are released and live to be a blessing to others. The last few weekends, and even today, confirmands have been gathering in small family units to affirm their faith. Normally around here, this would be a big hoopla at CLC. There'd even be a big sheet cake from Costco that we'd all feast on in the common space. But there is no big hoopla this year. It is quiet, yet concrete. It is a reminder of their baptism being the building block of God in our lives. Retelling, reaffirming, reminding us that we are God's. Nothing can separate us from God's love for us. Not taxes. Not tough questions we wrestle with generation to generation. Not war or famine or pandemic. We are God's children. We are loved. Child of God, you are loved. We are God's kingdom to set a world view that is different than that of Caesar's view. Our future is not in the way in which Lutherans have always done it. Our future is not in the records we have kept or will keep. Or who did what, who gave what, earned which award, how many years one served on a church council, or even who made it to be council president. 
but our future is to embrace the future, is to embrace God's grace that moves, that removes all the patches and badges and scars and traditions of today in order that we would live into God's amazing grace in all our lives and know in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection that Christ goes before us. And that is what we let go of all that is and was, that God is continually up to a new thing. May our faith lead us to be a transformed people of God. May we be setting a worldview rooted in the very vision of God's kingdom for us, released, freed for the very work that was with us yesterday, is at hand today, and is to come in the days ahead. May we, the Congregation of Christ Lutheran Church here on 89th Ave in Blaine, pledge to embrace what God is up to in our midst and offer to God ourselves in service and our offerings from the labors that we have been blessed with. Together, we can be untrapped, released, freed indeed in order to embrace God's grace in all that is before us. Amen. together in a time of prayer. Loving God, you shower us with blessings. Walk with us as we share what has been so freely given to us. As we embrace our future, let us live lives of generosity and love. Fill our frames until we become a holy presence in this world. Fill us until we become living stones built up into a spiritual community in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us look to your son, Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and sacrifice. May we emulate his life and give all that we have and all that we are for the sake of the kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of all time and God of all possibilities, with your strength we are able to turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. 
Open our eyes to what lies ahead. Open our minds to your wisdom and our hearts from indifference to loving compassion for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O God, for all people who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Healing God, send us out as your hands and feet to do whatever we can for whomever we can to ease the pain they have. We lift up now in our hearts or even spoken aloud those who are on our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From Ecclesiastes, send out your bread upon the waters, for after many days you will give it, get it back. As we offer our gifts to Christ and to one another, let us strive to be like Christ, to live like Christ, and to be generous like Christ. And let us join our hearts and our spirits as one, as together we pray the prayer as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We have one final sending song before our blessing this morning. fun arrangement of that tune hymn. Thank you, musicians, for sure. Before the blessing, just a reminder that if you would like to stay on for fellowship time and go into a breakout room, that will happen after our postlude this morning. Again, reminder of all the ways that you can drop off candy this week, um, dive alive, refresh, all those other things as we continue in God's world. Before we do so, though, receive this blessing. 
May we be a people who are working in and among God's people. May we be a community boldly moving into God's future. May we be a congregation that is embracing our faith, our neighbor, and our future. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we are blessed to be a blessing. Now, let me hear you all say amen. Amen. Amen.